Dalton's law of partial pressure. So every gas exerts a pressure. And when we're mixing multiple gases, uh, we, we, want a, we want a total pressure. And the total pressure is the sum of all of those partial pressures. So this is Dalton's law. If you take the pressure of each individual gas, uh, you can find the total pressure. So for two gases, you would add up the partial pressure of the first gas, the partial pressure of the second gas to get the partial to get the total pressure. If you had three gases, you would have three partial pressures to add together. If you had four gases, you'd have four partial pressures and and so forth. It definitely gets more complicated than that. I know it seems very straightforward, um, but it does get more complicated uh, because in this circumstance where you would calculate the total pressure just by adding P1, P2, P3, there's an assumption being made that temperature, volume, all of those things are staying constant. And as you can see um, uh, down below when we're looking at these, uh, at, the, at this picture here, you can see that volume is staying constant, but temperature is probably changing, right? Those molecules that are going fast are probably, um, they're making more collisions, so more opportunities for heat. Um, but you can see that you take the first pressure, the second pressure, and you add those together to get a third pressure. So again, that's assuming that everything else is sort of staying constant. That's not necessarily how it works though. Um, if volume and pressure are constant, again, you're just adding, here's an example of 50 kilopascals plus 100 kilopascals equals 150 kilopascals. So P1 plus P2 equals P total. Um, when we collect gas in a lab, we typically do it over water. This picture is what that would look like. You will actually be performing this in the lab, but where we take hydrochloric acid, we drop a solid piece of zinc in it, and that's a single replacement reaction where we get zinc chloride and hydrogen on its own. We know H2 is a gas form, so what's gonna happen is that gas is going to be released, and we put it through water in order to capture it into something. If we just had like a beaker or test tube or a gas collection tube sitting on top of this test tube. Um, the idea that there would be other molecules besides hydrogen there is true because there would be air. But if you have it over water, then the only thing in there is water vapor pressure, which we know exists, right? We've seen water vapor pressure. That's the pressure that water is exerting um, that when the uh, the water is turning into gas molecules and so forth, finding an equilibrium, all of that should be review. Um, but what's happening in this picture is we also have hydrogen gas being added. So what will be recorded in here is a total pressure. We won't be recording a specific hydrogen gas pressure, but what if you're asked for the hydrogen gas pressure? Well, you can take the total pressure in there. You can subtract the water pressure based on whatever temperature it's at, because we can compare the temperature and pressure through Gay-Lussac's law. And you can use then the partial Dalton's partial pressure law to, can, to calculate just the pressure of the hydrogen gas. So what if, something else is changing as well. You are gonna see this kind of problem. Um, I'm gonna talk about it a little conceptually here, but um, I will perform a couple of these calculations in the example problems in your notebook for you. So don't worry, those are coming. Um, but here it says two flasks, flasks are connected by a stopcock. This, that's this thing here in the middle and you can see that it's closed. It says when the stopcock is closed, flask A contains 3.5 liters of nitrogen gas at 2.55 ATM. So that's this blue side. And then flask B contains 1.5 liters of carbon monoxide. So um, a different gas. And then, huh, it says carbon monoxide in the question, but they wrote CO2 here. So sorry, carbon monoxide is just CO. Disregard that too. Um, and then at 0 0.85 ATM. It says, what is the total pressure when the stopcock is opened. So we can't just take our P1 and our P2 and add them together because our volume changed. Our volume went from 3.5 liters on one side and 1.5 on the other to 5 liters total. So that's when we have to use something like Boyle's law, which as a reminder is P1V1 equals P2V2 when pressure and volume are both changing. 
Um, again, I will show you how to do this in one of the examples in your notebook, um, but it would basically be taking a P1, V1, a Boyle's Law calculation uh, a few times to find a final pressure and a final volume.